Hello folks, in this video I'm going to show you how to build a DIY digital dash cluster like the one I have here in my MX-5 track car. This dash uses a low cost 10 inch LCD display with a Raspberry Pi computer mounted to the back of it. A quick note before we get started, I'm building this for my track car which runs a Megasquirt ECU with the Tuna Studio software. However, if you're running an OEM computer with OBD2 or perhaps a different aftermarket ECU, then look out for my upcoming video on an alternative dash software solution for you. So to build this dash, we're going to use a Raspberry Pi. In my car, I now use a Pi 4, but for the demo here, I'm using a spare Pi 3 Plus, which has some little heat sinks glued on. We're going to need some sort of display, more on that in a moment. We need an SD card to load the software onto, ideally a quality brand and at least 32 gigabytes is a good choice. I've got an SD card reader here to be able to load the software onto the SD card from my PC. And we'll need some cables, such as a USB cable to power the Pi, along with things like an HDMI cable to plug in the display and an Ethernet cable to install and update software on the Pi. Lastly, it's a good idea to grab that spare keyboard and mouse you've got living in the bottom of your closet so we can control the Pi. Now in terms of displays for the Pi, there's hundreds of options. Here are two that I've used in the past, the Raspberry Pi 7 inch touchscreen and this bezel free 10 inch panel. For this one, I made up a custom 3D printed bracket to mount the driver board and Raspberry Pi to the back of the panel, but in time I've discovered it just wasn't quite robust. However, I'm now running this 10 inch mini LCD monitor, which has proven to be more reliable. It was not exactly cheap, about a hundred bucks, but in the grand scheme of things, that isn't too terrible. I'll have a linky in the description if you wanna check it out. Now, time to build our operating system. One of the secrets to making this dash cluster better than my previous version is the move to using Diet Pi OS. But not just the standard vanilla Diet Pi. Instead, we're using the love child of a chap called Alex who blended Diet Pi with his own magic to produce a Diet Pi dash image. So crack open your favorite web browser and head to bartonicracing.com and download the Diet Pi dash image. Again, links to everything will be in the description. Note the download link will send you to the mega upload website. My advice here is to use the standard download option. Avoid using the weird mega upload downloader. It's a 1.3 gig download, so you have a few minutes wait time here. So go and grab your favorite beverage out of the fridge. Grab your SD card and load it into the reader, which you can then connect to your USB port of your PC. Now to write the newly downloaded image to the SD card, we need to open Bellina Etcher. Again, download link below. We select the flash from file option and then choose the image we just downloaded. Then select the target. And obviously we're targeting the SD card. You can see here if I click the show hidden option, we're presented with the drives of my PC. Thankfully, Belina Etcher is clever enough to detect that we probably don't want to write the image to any of those. Hit flash, grant admin access if you get the UAC pop-up like I did and wait for the image to write and perhaps time for another beverage refill. As the write completes, you may get Windows pop-ups suggesting you need to format a disk. Just ignore these and select cancel. Last thing we need to do here is open up the config.txt file from the drive labeled boot. At the very bottom of the file, we need to comment out all the HDMI settings. For some reason, these were messing with the Pi spitting out an image to the display for me, so commenting them out with a hash or pound character fixed that problem. Next, we can set the time zone, though you can do this later in the OS. For me, I set it to Australia. And lastly, we can set the device hostname, though this is optional and you can safely leave it at the default. Save that file and remove the SD card from your PC. Now that we have our OS all loaded up, we can insert the SD card into the back of the Raspberry Pi. Then we can connect a display via the HDMI port, five volt power via the USB port, and it'd also be a good idea to plug in your keyboard and mouse, as well as that ethernet cable for internet connectivity. Your Pi should now boot up and you'll hopefully get an output to your screen showing something like what you see here. It won't take long for all of it to load up to the OS and auto launch the preloaded Tuner Studio software. But we can close Tuner Studio for now. 
If it seems like your device has the wrong time or doesn't have internet connectivity, make sure you double click the enable networking icon on the desktop. You may need to reboot your Raspberry Pi after doing so. From here, it's time to make some updates and customizations. Firstly, provided you hooked up the internet via the ethernet or Wi-Fi, we can update the operating system by opening up a terminal and running sudo apt update. This command will take a good 10 or more minutes to run. Once that returns successfully, we can run sudo apt full hyphen upgrade. And again, we need to give that some time to complete. If you want to make use of the Pi's GPIO pins, there's some additional software we need to install. To do so, we run two commands. Firstly, sudo apt install python hyphen gpio0 and allow that to install. Then, sudo apt install python hyphen color0. This is useful as we can use a GPIO pin to trigger the Pi to gracefully shut down before we turn the car off. Remember that config file on the boot drive? Well, we've got some more parameters we can add to that to improve the performance of our device. So open up a file browser, locate the boot folder, and launch the config.txt file in the leafpad text editor. At the very bottom, add a new line and type boot underscore delay equals zero. And on a second new line type force underscore turbo equals one. Save and close the text file. These should slightly improve boot time and also overall device performance. Next thing we're going to set up is an auto startup script. To do so, we navigate to the slash root slash dot config slash auto start path. You'll notice there is already a file here to launch Tuner Studio. For me, I'm no longer using this script, so I'll delete it and replace it with my own. Let's create a new file. I'll call it mystart.desktop and then open it in leafpad. We're going to use this file to run a bash script when the OS boots up. Now the full content is on screen, but of course, remember there is a linky in the description where you can download the full instructions and all of the files used here. We can close the my start file, and this time we're going to navigate to the slash root directory. Again, we're creating a new file and calling it startup.sh. We need to edit this bash script in leafpad again. We're going to use this script to firstly launch Tuner Studio, and then secondly, it's going to enable the GPIO pin 21 and set it as an input. Then lastly for this bash script, we are going to get it to launch a Python script called shutdown button. I've included the shutdown script in the download pack. We'll need to copy that to the root directory later. Essentially what this Python script does is wait for when the GPIO pin 21 has been grounded for at least one second. Then it launches a shutdown process, which will firstly close down Tuner Studio and then wait six seconds to allow that to happen. And lastly, powers down the Pi completely. Now, Alex, the creator of this Diet Pi Dash image, has some updates that we can apply as well. To do so, we need to run a wget command. It's quite long, so I'll post it on screen here, and it's also in the download pack. Once that script's downloaded, we need to use the chmod command to make the script executable, and then we run the script, which will let it go and do its thing. Once that script returns, we run a reboot of the Pi. After the reboot, We'll see the wallpaper has gotten all patriotic, but don't fret, you can change that later if you want. Next is another update script to download. The process is much the same as the last, so again we wget to download it, we chmod to enable execution, and run the script. And this will again do its thing, download some stuff and install some things. You'll notice once the script completes, the icons on the desktop have slightly changed and we now have a small app to manage a few features. For the moment, we don't really need any of these, so we'll just move on. Right, let's do something about that wallpaper. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but I don't really want a scary eagle staring at me every time I drive my car. So I'm going to show you how to connect a USB drive so you can copy files over, such as a wallpaper image or the shutdown button script we spoke about earlier. Firstly, obviously plug in the USB. Secondly, from the terminal, we run the fdisk hyphen L to list all the disk volumes attached to the Pi. Take note of the one named something like slash dev slash SDA1, 
with a size that matches your USB drive. You need to create a path to mount the USB drive to. So we run mkdir slash USB hyphen drive. Then we mount the USB drive to that path with mount slash dev slash sda1 space slash USB hyphen drive. You can then browse to that path in the file explorer and you'll see the files from your USB drive. We can copy over whatever we want now, a new wallpaper, your mega squirt tune, etc. Changing the desktop wallpaper may be done by right clicking and selecting desktop preferences. From there, it should be straightforward to change to whatever your heart desires. Now, finally time to set up Tuner Studio. Launch it via the desktop icon and let's open up the tune we just copied over. You may get a prompt to update your Tuner Studio version. You should do that whenever you have a moment, but I'll skip it for now. There's a couple of things that I like to do that make Tuner Studio more practical for a dash. First, go to Options, Preferences, and tick the Load Last Project on Startup option, and also tick the Make Dashboards Full Screen option. And little self-promotion here, if you are looking for some interesting dashboard layouts to use in Tuner Studio, I have a website where you can download a bunch for free. Check out tunerstudio-dashboards.com. When you're on your next lunch break, there's a bunch of designs there made by myself and a few friends. One last tip for those of you who have made it this far in the video is to check out TS Dash. It's a Dash specific version of the software from EFI Analytics that starts up fast and loads your dashboard without the bloat that the full Tuner Studio comes with. Perfect for this sort of application if you are happy that you'll have to do any tuning tweaks on a separate laptop. Something to check out, but I haven't used TS Dash on my Dash cluster yet. Now in terms of physical assembly, this is my setup with how I have everything hooked up and powered. On the back side here is the 12 volt power input through a main power switch. This runs to a 5 volt converter to power the Pi, which you can see is the red connect hooked up to the GPIO pins. The other obvious thing here is the cooling fan on the back. This is handy to keep the Pi cool in the hot cabin of the race car, and it's powered by a couple of the GPIO pins also. Hanging off the bottom of the Pi is a short USB extension. I have this here purely to make it easier to connect the cable to the ECU, and beside that is a small Bluetooth dongle for a mini keyboard and mouse setup. On the other side of the Pi is the mini HDMI port, which is used to output to the display. So obviously the other end of that cable plugs into a full size HDMI port. And next to that is the 12 volt barrel jack power input to the display that comes from the main power switch. And lastly is this momentary switch, which I use to power down the Pi. It's connected to GPIO pin 21 and to ground pin, and it triggers that shutdown Pi script that we spoke about earlier. The whole setup is attached to this LU core panel I cut out by hand to roughly emulate the OEM cluster shape, and it's all sandwiched together with a 3D printed bracket to make everything fairly contained and about as small as I can get it. When it's all set up and installed in the car, here's what boot up looks like. This is in full real time, no speeding up. Flicking on the power switch to the left powers up the display and the Pi at the same time. The Pi gets to work booting up and it takes around 18 seconds to load the OS and show us the desktop. Then there's roughly another 16 seconds or so to start up Tuner Studio and for that to be fully loaded up in the full screen dash mode. That's a total of just a little over 30 seconds from dead to dash, more than fast enough for my purposes. Meanwhile, pressing the shutdown button for one second triggers the shutdown script, which closes Tuner Studio, waits a moment, and then shuts down the OS. Once the display's blue splash screen is present, I can safely flick off the main power switch. And that's the whole DIY digital dash cluster setup. In the real world, when out on track, it's exceptional for presenting all the critical data and showing warnings or errors if there are any potential issues cropping up, as you can see on the screen now where the coolant temp was peaking beyond the safe limit and the dash is telling me to slow down. Suffice to say, sometimes I don't listen. 
I hope this guide is valuable to you in your build. I know this is a fairly niche project, but please, if you did get something out of the video, I hope you might consider letting me know via a comment below. I really appreciate hearing from those of you out there who built a dash similar to this, or what cool ideas you might have for your own dash build. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.